What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here and in this Unreal Engine 5 Blueprints tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up damage, fall off with your line traces. So as you can see here when I am in range with this weapon you can see the damage says 20, 20, 20 and as I step back out of range which I've got set to 10 meters for this weapon you can see the damage starts to fall off and the more I step back the more drastically it falls off by to the point where I am doing no damage at all because this damage fall off is exponential. So the further away I am, the less damage I do. Uh, I'm doing a very small amount of damage here and as I take a few steps forward, you can see that that amount of damage very, very quickly starts to rise until I'm doing the maximum damage for this weapon, which is 20 damage now just fyi guys this is built off of the top of my ultimate weapon system tutorial so if you haven't seen that tutorial already i highly recommend you check it out um, but fyi this will work with any kind of line trace any kind of weapon system you've got this is just some essentially some math logic on the end of your line trace so without further ado guys let me show you how to do this Alrighty guys, now I am here in my first person version of my ultimate weapon system and all I've done to this project is I have drag and dropped the third person character blueprint out into this world and as you saw in the intro, I've also added my damage indicator as you can see by this folder here. Um, and if you'd like to know how to add the damage indicator to your project, I have a tutorial on that, which I will link in a card up the top right, right now. And the first thing I'm going to do in here is go to where my line trace is being drawn. And we're going to make a couple of changes to this and add to this to do our damage fall off. But first, I'm just going to create a a new trace channel for my projectiles here. So I'm going to go to edit and project settings and search for trace. And here under trace channels, I'm going to add a new trace channel. I'm just going to call it bullets and leave the default response to block. But now when I go back here to my line trace, I can right click and go to refresh node and now bullets will appear here under trace channel. I can change this to bullets. The other thing I need to do is just to make sure that none of my sphere collision uh, or capsule components are blocking this trace channel. So for example, in my first person character here, I can select my capsule component and I can search for collision. And here under collision presets, I can change this to custom and change bullets to ignore so this capsule component will ignore this bullets trace channel that we've just created and we can also do this in our enemies character so i'm just using this third person character as an enemy to demonstrate this damage fall off so i'm going to select the capsule component here and also search for collision and change this to custom ignore bullets and the only other thing i need to do is make these sphere collisions on my pickups here ignore the bullets as well so i'm going to go to my props folder and pickups and go to my pickup master here select the pickup radius which is the name i gave to the sphere collision search for collision change collision presets to custom and ignore bullets and just to double check that that is all working if i hit play now my bullets will not collide with the spheres that are around these pickups and they will also collide with this mesh like so and only the mesh nice okay let's have a look at doing some damage fall off now this will all primarily take place uh, right here on the line trace and i might do a tutorial in the future where we where we put the line trace into a component that we add to our weapons but just for now um, we'll just keep it in our characters blueprint um, so as per usual the first thing we want to do when we do a line trace is check if we hit anything so we can put a branch on the return value here. We can also drag off of the out hit and break hit result. Drop this down. And um, 
Ah, the other thing we need to do before we continue here is we need to add to our range here on our line trace because um, there's no good, it's no good for our line trace to just end at the range of our weapon. We want it to extend a little bit further. So I'm actually going to put an addition node here, plug this in here, and I'll just make this something like 5,000 at the moment for uh, 50 meters. So the range will extend 50 meters beyond, um, the line trace will extend 50 meters beyond the range of our weapon. And what we need to do now is check the difference between the uh, length of this line trace and what it hits uh, and the range of our weapon. So what we can do is we can drag off of location here and subtract and we will subtract the start point of our line trace. So this may get a little bit messy here. I might just grab all of this and move it out to the side. Grab all of this stuff here and move it down. Move this up here out of the way. Quick reroute node here to clean this up. And I'm just gonna grab the location here and plug it straight into that subtract node like so. So the location, the hit location of our line trace minus the start location of our line trace. Um, oh, we can just do trace start here minus the trace start. We can just do it like that. Uh, and then what we want to do is check the length of this vector. So we can drag off of here and find vector length, if I can spell length. And now we have the length from the start of our line trace to whatever it hits. And we can compare this to the range of our weapon. So if I get my current weapon, this nifty little pure function that we created, I can get the range and I'm gonna check if this vector length is less or equal to the range of my weapon. So if what we hit is in range, and this is very useful because if it is in range, what we can do is just print a string and let's just for now, we'll print just the damage of our weapon. So we'll get current weapon and get damage and plug this in here. And so if we're in range, this will just print the full amount of damage that our weapon does. Nice. If we are not in range, we need to do a little bit of maths here. And you don't have to do your damage fall off exactly like this. You may want it to, uh, you know, fall off a bit more steeply or not as steeply. Um, you know, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. So what I'm actually going to do now is take this vector length and subtract the range. So this gives us the number of units over the range um, that the thing we hit is. So if uh, our range is 500, for example, and we've hit something uh, 650 units away, this will return 150 units. So the, the object we hit is 150 units out of range. Um, I'm going to multiply this via a very small number, something like 0. Point, uh, let's do 0. 0.01, whoops, 0. 0.01. And I am going to square this. And this is what makes our damage fall off exponential. So the more out of range it is, the more it will drop off because we are going to minus this off of the damage. Damage minus this figure squared is the damage that we're actually going to do. And we're gonna clamp this to make sure, um, whoops, not clamp axis, let me clamp float. Clamp float and the minimum will be zero. So we'll keep this above zero. We don't want to add health to our enemy if this ends up being a negative number. If we're so far out of range that it's a negative number. I mean, it's squared, so it should be positive anyway, but um, let's just clamp this just in case. And let's just make the maximum something like a thousand. 
um you know it, this needs to be this needs to be higher than the maximum damage weapon in your project so that you're not nerfing your weapon by clamping the damage here um and then what we can do is just print a string and we'll print this on false here so if we are out of range then we are going to print the damage as this like so now this should all be working um, but the range of my weapons is quite high so i'm just going to go into my weapons folder uh, props weapons and I'm just going to change the range in the class defaults of my pistol. So I'm going to open my pistol and I'm going to change the range here to, let's make it 1000 for 10 meters like so. And I'll leave the damage as 20. And now we can test this out. So if we hit play, uh, if I'm within 10 meters of this enemy, You can see it saying 20, 20, 20. And then, so up the top right, if you keep an eye on that print, print string, as I take a few steps back, it's dropping, dropping, dropping. And now it's dropping much, much faster to the point where it's zero here. Um, so this has got a decimal point here, and you may want to make this an integer. If you wanted to make this an integer, all you would need to do is uh, truncate this figure. So I believe we can just get a truncate like so, and this will need a different conversion here because it's converting a integer to a float. So obviously if you were gonna have a damage indicator and you know you didn't want your your characters to have health in the decimals, uh, then you would want to truncate that to an integer. So now when I'm out of range, so 19, 19, 18, 18, 17, 16, and down to like two, nice. So that's about the limit of the range of this weapon and zero like i said if you wanted to calculate this slightly differently you could but this is what i came up with for a nice steep exponential drop off in range and you could also just play with the the range figure on your weapons um, but we don't just want to print a string here we want to apply this damage to our enemy and as you saw in the intro i have already got in my third person character here my damage indicator set up and once again if you want to learn how to set up this damage indicator i've got quite a clean little tutorial that shows you how to do that um, but what we're going to do now is pass the damage figure over to this enemy character blueprint and how we can do that is with a node called apply damage it's a very useful node. It's a built-in system that Unreal Engine has that automatically uh, executes across the server, as you can see by this little icon here. And it passes, you know, whatever information you want across, such as the amount of damage that's done. And then uh, I'll also show you a node that sort of receives that information on the damaged actor. So here we can delete these print strings and I'm actually going to delete this truncate here because as you can see here, the base damage is a float variable. Uh, you would just have to truncate it after that um, enemy receives the damage. You would want to truncate it there. So we're going to pass through a float value instead. And what I can do is I can plug this into the true here. The base damage will be the damage of our weapon and the damage actor will be the hit actor from the hit result on our line trace right here. So I will just grab a reroute node and let's put this across the bottom like so. And I'm also going to duplicate this node and plug it into the false. And if we are out of range, whoops, not very good with my mouse today. If we are out of range, um, the damage actor is going to be the hit actor and the base damage is going to be the output right here. Very nice. Now, if we go, we can compile and save this. And if we go to our enemy's character blueprint, what we can do is search for a node called event 
any damage. And this will be cause this will be called any time that this apply damage communicates with this damaged actor. So the the actor has been hit and this applies damage and this will be called in the event of any damage being done. Um, now you could just put your print string here. If you wanted, you could uh, print string and plug the damage into the print string and you would see that working, but I've got this damage indicator set up just so that it looks a bit nicer. Uh, so I'm gonna plug this into my damage indicator logic right here and in the damage uh, indicator tutorial, we set up the damage variable as a float, but I've just made it an integer here because obviously you don't want your damage indicator to come. I mean, maybe you do want your damage indicator to show decimal places, um, in which case you can keep it as a float, but I just made it an integer. And if we just plug this damage in here, it will just automatically uh, populate it with this truncate node that I showed you earlier. So now, if I hit play, I will have a damage indicator and it will say 20, 20, 20, because that's our maximum damage. And if I step back out of range, you can see that that is dropping, dropping, dropping. And now we are totally out of range. Nice. That's it guys, I'm not going to set it up for any other weapons because it's not really necessary, um, but this should be working. Um, the damage is set to 20, but the range is set to something like 150 meters, so, and I don't have an aiming animation for this weapon, so it's kind of hard to, to hit the enemy. Um, but yeah, that's working, very nice. Guys, if this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe, and I will. See you on the next one.